But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. But by every word. So you can see, if you continue reading, that Jesus was able to defeat Satan and all his temptations. So this illustration seems to indicate to us that fasting is essential in our lives if we are going to be victorious over Satan. Fasting is essential in our lives if we are going to be victorious over Satan. If Jesus had to practice fasting for victory, then I think it's important for you and me to consider fasting for us to be able to defeat Satan. Look at what fasting did to Jesus. Verse 14. Jump to verse 14. This is the result of fasting in the life of Jesus. The Bible says, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And news of him went out through all the surrounding. Go to verse 1. I want you to look at something. Can we read together? One, two, three. So here you are seeing Jesus was what of the Holy Spirit? Jesus was? Verse 14. Then? So when he was going into fasting, he was full of the Spirit. When he was coming from fasting, he was returning in the power of the Spirit. Are you seeing the difference? So there is a very significant difference in those two phrases that were, are used there. So when Jesus went into the desert, the gospel says that, the Luke says that he went full of the Holy Spirit. Full of? But when he returned from the desert after 40 days of fasting, he, say, he says, and he returned in the power of the Spirit. So in other words, it is one thing to be full of the Spirit, and it's another thing to be in the power of the Spirit. So a lot of Christians of today are full of the Spirit. But they don't walk in the power of the Spirit. Are we together up to there? There's a difference between being full of the Spirit and walking in the power of the... So from... From the time of his baptism onwards, the spirit was there. But the fasting season that he did released the power of the Holy Spirit to flow through his life and his ministry without hindrance. So during baptism, he received the Holy Spirit and he was full of the spirit. So the spirit was in him. But he was not walking in the demonstration of that power. Until he took time to fast and to do what? He took time to do what? So, again, I believe this is a pattern for all of us. If you want to release the power of the spirit that is in you, in your life and in your ministry, you have to take time to fast and to pray. That's why a lot of Christians today they are full of the Spirit. And we can see they are full of the Spirit by the fact that they speak in tongues. Because one evidence of being filled by the Holy Spirit is what? So you can see that you are full of the Spirit. But how many of us have seen the power of the Spirit at work in our lives? How many of you have prayed for the sick and they got well? How many of us have been able to lead one person to Jesus? Because that, does, that, that is not the function of the Spirit in you. It's the function of the Spirit in your life. Am I making sense? So you are full of the Spirit, yes. But He is dormant, per se. But when you take time to pray and fast, you activate and release the power of the Spirit. This is a pattern that Jesus demonstrated to us. That even though He was full of the Spirit... When he was going to the desert, he took time to fast and to pray so that this, the power of the Spirit can be released in his life. So we can clearly say that fasting 
and praying releases the power of the Spirit. This is true because Jesus says it again in John 14, 12. Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than this, he shall do. Because I go to the... So when did the works of Jesus begin? During baptism or after fasting? So you see, it's not that you don't have the Holy Spirit. He is in you. But you will only begin to do the works of Jesus. The works that he said, he who believes in me will do what I have done. You will only begin to do those works when you take time to fast and to do what? To pray. So if you want to follow in the other works that Jesus did, it seems very logical to me that you must begin where Jesus began. And Jesus began to demonstrate the power of the Spirit in him by after fasting. That is why you are a shepherd and your love group has not been able to grow. You are an elder and you are not a captain of a hundred. Why? Because even though you are anointed, you have not released or activated the anointing that is resident in you. Because Jesus activated the anointing that was resident in him by praying and fasting. That is why you are a Christian and you cannot rebuke a headache. Even though you speak in tongues in capital letters, sometimes you even run while speaking in tongues. You even, you even tell people I'm receiving m -Pesa because of speaking in tongues. But when there's a headache around you, you can't rebuke it. If you see a demon, you say, let me call pastor. As if pastor is the only one who has the power to rebuke the demon. What's the difference between pastor and you? Pastor has taken time to release the power that is resident in him into his life and his ministry. Just like Jesus did. So how can you do greater works than Jesus and you don't want to start where Jesus started? That is why Jesus took time to teach his disciples to fast. Matthew chapter 6 verse 17. The Bible says, but when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you don't appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you. So Jesus promises to reward those who practice fasting in the right way and for the right motives. He said, when you fast, my father who sees in secret will answer you. Now notice a little word there that makes the whole difference. Verse 17. Notice that word. He says, when, when, not if you fast. He says, you know if you'd have used the word if, you would have left it open to a possibility that you can decide to fast or not. But he tells his disciples, when you fast, meaning he's expecting them because he himself was only able to release the anointing in him through prayer and so he expected, if you want to do the works that I'm doing or, the, or greater works than this, I expect that you also take time to pray and so when you fast, verse 18 he says, I will reward you because my father sees in secret. So he will reward you in in public. He will reward you in secret again. So Jesus assumed that we would continue with the habit of taking time to fast and to pray. And you can clearly see that Jesus was only able to defeat Satan because he fasted and so his fasting and gave him victory over Satan. So how do you expect to have victory over Satan and you don't take time to fast? That's why Jesus spoke and said, this does not come except through prayer. This does not come out except through prayer and fasting. That is why your life looks like it is stagnant. Because you are at equilibrium with Satan. You have the same power. 
Yet God has given you more power. And that more power is fasting. But how many Christians use it? I'm not talking about the fasting that is trending now. The ones that you fast until you die. I have told you fasting is abstaining from solid food. Not from drink. That is just a type of. Because you know you can live for more days with drink than if you, without, what, without food. Like even if you're not eating, you can live longer on drinks. Because you're not dehydrated. What kills people, by the way, is not hunger. It's dehydration. But look at you. You don't fast. You are a shepherd who doesn't fast and pray. And you expect to release the anointing in you. So it's true, you've caught the anointing because you've been listening to sermons. You've been reading your Bible because that's how the anointing is caught. The Spirit entered into me as he spake unto me. Look at how the Spirit entered into Jesus. When a dove came from heaven and a voice was heard saying, this is my beloved. So the Spirit entered into Jesus at that time when a voice was heard. Because spirits are transferred during voices. Like in voices. You understand my point? Now, yes, it's true you have it. But why can't I not see it working in your life? I know you are anointed like crazy. But why don't I see a hundred men following you as an elder? I know you are anointed as crazy. Why haven't I not seen you praying for the sick and they are healed? I know you are anointed like no, no man's business. But why haven't you not led anyone to salvation? Not because the anointing is not there, but because the anointing has not been activated and put to use. And what activates the power of God that is resident in you? According to the life of Jesus, Luke 2.14, and he returned in the power of the Spirit. He returned, but when he was going in, he was going full of, but this time he's returning in power. He's not returning full of the Spirit because he already was. Now he's returning in power. Do you want to return in power? Yes. Do what Jesus did. Number two, examples of fasting in the New Testament. That's the life of Jesus. Fasting in the early church. So not only was fast, fasting practiced by Jesus, it was also practiced in the New Testament church, Acts 13. Now, in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Nija, Lucia of Cyrene, Manen, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. So five men. As they ministered to the Lord and did what? As they did what? So when the Bible says, when they ministered to the Lord, what are they almost communicating? When they served the Lord and fasted, as they served the Lord and fasted, now separate to me by numbers and soul for the work to which I have called them. Verse 3. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Look at that. Even though the Holy Spirit spoke, what did they do next? The Holy Spirit had already said, set aside by numbers. And soul for the work that I've set aside. So what would have been the most, like in the Christians of today, what would have been the easiest thing to do? He just to say, hey, Holy Spirit, I'm going to say my Silio. But what did they do? Then, having fasted, so even after the Holy Spirit spoke, they went ahead and fasted, then laid hands. So the leaders of the church who are ministering to the Lord and fasting together. And in the course of their fasting, they received a revelation from the Holy Spirit that, the, that two of, of their number were to be sent out for a special apostolic ministry. And receiving this re revelation, they did not send them out immediately. They again fasted and prayed, then laid hands on them. Then, the Bible says, then they were sent away. Then they were? Then they were? So they were sent away by the Holy Spirit. He spoke and he did the sending. How did he do the sending? After fasting, he did the sending. Remember Jesus, full of the Spirit, going to pray? And Jesus, 
coming in the power of the Spirit. Same story. So from this particular scripture, we can actually see again that fasting transfers us from the natural to the supernatural. Just like Jesus was transferred from the natural to the supernatural in the desert. Again here, he is transferred. The early church, the five men who are praying and fasting, were transferred from the realm of the natural to the realm of the? So when the church leaders moved out of the supernatural realm, or rather, when the church leaders moved out of the natural realm through fasting, they had a supernatural revelation and a supernatural authorization. And the Holy Spirit himself accepted the responsibility for what they did. But how did they get here? Through collective or group fasting. So they didn't get here to receive power from singing only, from dancing. They go to this space by doing what? Praying and? So after Paul and Barnabas had gone out on this ministry, you can read from Acts 14.23, they began to establish new converts in the various cities into proper churches because they had been authorized by the Holy Spirit. So when they had appointed the elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had, in whom they had, after they prayed and fasted, they commended the elders to the Lord. So they appointed, but didn't just appoint. It was after they had prayed and fasted. So fasting was not, a, was not just a single and an unusual occurrence in the early church. It was practiced regularly by the apostles and taught to their new disciples. Because you can see here, when they appointed the elders, the next thing is they prayed and fasted. Meaning they taught this spiritual discipline to the new converts who are coming in, in the different churches. So do you teach your disciples to pray and fast? Or you are the only one who takes time to fast? Do your shepherds fast with you? Like spiritual fasting. Biblical fasting. So the two main events in the spread of the gospel in the early church were first, sending out of apostles, and second, the establishing of new churches and new converts. Right? They established these new converts through the appointment of elders, like what we just read. So the anointing is in you, but the, anoint the anointing is not activated. You cannot say, and he returned in the power. So you are full of the Holy Spirit, but you're not returning in power. Because you're not returning in power. You've not sung, and you saw people getting, giving their lives to Jesus. But Kasioka is anointed. But we cannot see the demonstration of the power that is in her. Why is there no demonstration of power? Because you've not taken time to fast and to pray. The habit of fasting and praying is a basic habit for a basic Christian. And I put a disclaimer. When you want to fast, it's important that you notify you are. Not because he's controlling you, just so that someone can be watching over. So that someone can be watching over you. Because Jesus himself told his disciples, don't fast for now. A time is coming when I'll require you to fast. But when I'm with you, Chaza Chini, eat. Twende Arusi. Twende Shere. 
eh? Multiply food. Multiply food and wine. And change water to wine. Mkunyo <laughs> mulewe. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, are you going to start praying and fasting? Now, you know, once the word of God is taught, the next thing that we should do is to apply. Because I told you, the word of God is not taught for information. The word of God is taught for, for obedience. Hey there, thanks for tuning in. We've got tons of awesome content coming your way every week and we don't want you to miss a bit. The best way to stay up to date with the Greater Love Church and Bonnie Bahati is by subscribing to us on all social media platforms. That is Instagram, TikTok and YouTube. And guess what? That's not all. We're also going live every Sunday for not one but two incredible services. First up, our early church service at 9am and then our Pacha Chapel service at 12 noon. So whether you're an early bird or a late sleeper, we've got you covered. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and join our amazing community.